This edition of my uh, series on railway history is all about uh, William Headley, or rather about the engines, a couple of the engines which he built. Um, he was uh, an engineer born towards the end of the uh, uh, 18th century, 1779, and he worked as a manager at Wine and Colliery in the early 19th century up in uh, near Newcastle upon Tyne, North East England and um, he uh, developed a series or a couple of locomotives which are very significant to the early history of railways. Uh, his first uh, effort or his first um, locomotive was the um, Puffing Billy and um, well, it's actually the second engine that he built because he did experiment with a sort of Trevithick type uh, locomotive and um, the second engine, Puffing Billy, which he built, uh, was built with uh, the assistance of these foreman blacksmith, Tom Timothy Hackworth, who of course is a, becomes a famous um, uh, engineer in his own right subsequently. And they built together um, Puffing Billy, which first ran in 1813, and which is still with us. It's uh, in its latest or its final form. It's now preserved at the Science Museum in London and um, I've modelled the um, Puffing Billy in its original incarnation which had a series of eight driving wheels on four axles coupled together by a series of cogs uh, which ran underneath the engine and um, basically the engine looks like a couple of small beam engines uh, powered from the boiler which uh, uh, rotate on the horizontal, up and down on the horizontal uh, uh, axis to um, to fire up, uh, to put pressure into the little pistons which then in turn directly drive from a crank um, well, they're driven by a piston, they, they, they then provide uh, the impetus to, to turn the crank which goes down between the middle two set of the eight driving wheels and turns around there but it actually drives the cog wheels uh, because all four axles, as I say, are connected together by cogs, and um, it was it was fairly successful uh, in its own right for its own time, uh, twin cylinder type, and it was running as a plate weight locomotive, certainly um, initially, and then uh, as the uh, wear and tear on the track really led to all sorts of uh, problems. Uh, for uh, the the owning company, uh, damaging track and all the rest of it, and um, initially it, it had been built with, um, I think it had been initially built with eight wheels, but then the extra pair of wheels was added uh, in about 1815. But then it went back to um, its original condition uh, briefly with eight wheels, and a second locomotive uh, known as a Wylam Dilly, brilliant name. Um, that also came out from uh, Headley's uh, construction, very similar looking uh, locomotive and um, it, it worked quite well and they were both hauling coals, um, only, only uh, a very slow speed of course, and, um, but certainly much more powerful than any, uh, than any uh, horses uh, could manage at the time. The, the idea of putting all those axles onto it was to try and reduce the weight per wheel set onto the plate weight track to stop it snapping those cast iron plates. And it ran fairly well, but edge rails uh, that replacing the, the plate weight track was introduced, um, I suppose, in about 19, 1830, something like that. And as a result, it was converted to a flanged wheel locomotive. and. I've modelled both the original version and also the later version, the flange wheel version, um, and I've given the slightly later version um, the name of Steam Horse, which it isn't exactly, but it's similar to the um, original locomotive Steam Horse that uh, Headley uh, that Headley built. The Puffing Billy then remains the oldest surviving uh, steam locomotive. Um, at some stage it was converted over to uh, four driving wheels and a much more sort of conventional arrangement four driving flange wheels and a smaller four-wheeled attached um, 
tender I suppose is the only way to describe it so I've modeled all three versions of those and again together uh, with uh, Trevithick's locomotive and with other any others of that sort of period you can really capture the atmosphere of those early well it's late Georgian perhaps early Victorian uh, plateway railways well, here we are in trains railway simulator and this is my model of the original puffing billy with its eight driving wheels and, a, and additional pair of wheels uh, over the um, uh, underneath the uh, uh, water barrel and so if we just set it going let's give it a bit of, bit of movement if I can do that let's select it here we go and you can see there the two uh, basically uh, beam engines the two small beams uh, adapted from stationary beam engines and they're each driving a cylinder the original version only had a single cylinder and was distinctly underpowered um, although I can't say this one is exactly you know fly Scotsman um, but it would drive the uh, you can see the rods there being uh, the vertical rods coming down from the middle of the beams and those rods then are rotating the uh, upper I'm just about to see there the upper if I just use the mouse to show you the upper um, cogged wheel which is then driving these cog wheels which then in turn it's a cog train which runs along and drives each of the driving wheels and you can see there that the um, little engine is going along quite nicely let's give it a bit more steam and uh, so this is it running as a plateway this plateway version and uh, this lasted for about a dozen years or more <clears throat> until the Wylam colliery went over from plate plate from being a plateway to being a an edge rail uh, railway and you can see there are various other locomotives are dotted around here which I'm going to be talking about in subsequent uh, railway histories or at least one of them anyway and um, so if I just stop puffing Billy there and I'm going to go over to free roaming where are we free roaming and just pull back a bit and move ourselves see I've got some ordinary edge rail here because the other variants that I've modeled on the edge rail and this is just the standard that actually comes from from the uh, Cephalon Carlisle uh, pack now we're on to edge rail and we've got flanged wheels but essentially it's the same sort of uh, locomotive and um, the uh, if I switch back to this one here we are actually what I need to do is stop set that one going so we stop we go back there and we nip round and have a look at this loco it's getting very complicated and make sure we're selected on that and then we'll set this one going hopefully there we go so it's going to act in exactly the same way as the um, the other the um, plateway locomotive but now it's running on edge rails this was a sort of an intermediate process and as far as the model is concerned I've called this one Steam Horse um, but you can see here William Headley 1813 Wylam and so you could certainly have an edge rail colliery railway running these uh, amazing old um, locomotives so we'll just bring that to a halt and uh, a small number of those cauldron wagons or children wagons or whichever way you pronounce them you can see there's a couple there just behind the engine and if we go over to the third version which I model which is also an edge rail version over here and here it is now uh, with a somewhat simplified uh, cog gear and it's operating as a uh, with it with four driving wheels as opposed to eight four slightly larger driving wheels as opposed to eight and of course the same characteristic in that the fireman is sitting backwards Better change that over it's sitting backwards um, so you must enjoy that as a bit of a, a bit of a ride but I think they're quite fascinating I mean you hitch up a couple of wagons to these and they're very entertaining indeed 
and indeed you can set them so they're just shunting up and down from the coal mine down to maybe a depot or something like that and they can just trot away all day long shunting up and down with their um, with their loads and they provide a, a really um, decorative I think um, adjunct to any any line as a little industrial a little industrial um, extension to any layout but you've got to set your layout back to the 1850s latest I would have thought so it's no good putting these up next to you know, Mallard or King George V or any of the <laughs> any of the much later locomotives these would be museum pieces in fact this is the one the version that is in the science museum in london so there we are that's the other uh, plateway uh, plateway and edge rail uh, models which i've done there is one more to come which i shall do at some stage but i hope you find this interesting and if you do please subscribe it's completely free there is no obligation whatsoever uh, it just gives me a boost um, in the sense of I feel like somebody's out there actually enjoying these and also um, please leave comments if you wish and all of these models as always are available apart from this track of course which is part of a commercial track not for the Sutton Carlisle but all of the locomotives which I'm showing you and other things which I'll talk about in my railway history series all the models are available free of charge freeware for trains railway simulator no other type of simulator and they're all free of charge on my website the address for which is at um, the end of this video so there we are we just bring the final version of Wylam Dilly to a halt and that's the end of this video